we here this morning to serve, to pursue, and to profess. To serve, to pursue, and to profess. Try it again. To serve, to pursue, and to profess. To serve God and to serve one another. To pursue Jesus and all, all that he's taught, all that he's given, and to profess what God has done in our lives and is doing in our lives to those who will be still long enough to listen. Amen? Amen. 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 Good morning, saints of a most high God. Look at y'all. They want to take that mirror down. I think it ought to be up there so you guys look at yourselves and see how good looking you are. Man, you, you see it every morning. Well, maybe that's the problem. I want to continue this morning a series that we began a few weeks ago, A Purpose and a Calling. Um, I began a couple weeks ago by laying a foundation for it, uh, by asking, first of all, have we forgiven? Are we a people who forgive? And then asking, then who am I? Who am I in Christ? Who am I? Not who am I the world has made, but who am I in Christ? Because a lot of us, oh, Lord, have mercy, we have been tweaked. We wear masks to please other people and to cause them to believe we're someone we're not. We're trying to be someone, trying to be our neighbor, keeping up with the Joneses. There's the Joneses. And it's my heart, my hope this morning that we've, we've given these things over to prayer in our lives, that we've given these things over to med- meditation, uh, almost said medication. <laughs> we've, we've given these things over to meditation, that we become aware of areas in our lives where we need to find forgiveness, areas in our lives that, that we need to, to bring forgiveness into. And, and that we become accepting of who we are and of who Father God made us to be. I said last week, you know, I spent a lot of my life not being happy with who God made me to be. And spent a lot of my time trying to be somebody else. And it doesn't work very well. It doesn't work very well at all. So I pray that inner healings have taken place. I pray today that you're walking in freedoms that maybe weren't yours even two weeks ago. I pray that takes place with you. And uh, I pray that today you're ready for the why. Why, then, if I am who God made me to be, why am I here at all? Why am I here? So I want to go to Second Timothy this morning and begin with a reading from Second Timothy. And I want to begin at verse uh, chapter 1. Verse 8, second, in fact, I, I want to back up to 7. If I, if I don't give you 7, you don't know what the therefore is there for. <laughs> so let's begin at verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of what? Fear. Fear but of wow. and, wow. and a sound mind. Therefore, Paul says, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Amen. Paul says here that he is persuaded. I looked in the Amplified Version and, and it says, and, and Paul says, tells Timothy, I am positively persuaded. Amen? That, that's a, that, that means beyond a shadow of a doubt. 
beyond any in, 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 inclination to believe otherwise, convinced beyond measure, confident in obedience to. He says, I know that I know that I know that I know in my knower whom I have believed. And nobody's messing with it. Amen? Amen. Positively persuaded of what? To what? That what he was accomplishing. Amen? Paul, Paul was persuaded that what he was accomplishing, even suffering for the gospel of Jesus Christ, was accomplished and suffered according to the power of God. Man, that's a forkful. That's a forkful. According to the power of God. Paul was fully positively persuaded that he was saved, amen? That he was called with a holy calling. He, he knew it beyond a shadow of a doubt, amen? He was called uh, uh, with, with, a, with a holy calling and all according to God's own purpose and grace. He said, there's no purpose of mine in it other than to glorify God. He said, the purpose is God. I've been called to it, and I believe it. And because I've been called to it, and I believe it beyond, beyond anybody messing with me, then by golly, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what he called me to do. And everything that's contained in it, I'm walking in. If it calls for shackles, shackle me. If it calls for handcuffs, handcuff me. If it calls for being thrown into a deep, dark dungeon, throw me in. Because nobody is thrown in a dungeon except through the power of God. Amen? Amen. See, we all say, I want to be right where God wants me to be. You know, go easy with that one. Go easy with that one. He was, he was convinced that he was called to preach. The word of God. He was convinced that he was called to be a teacher, convinced that he was called to be an apostle and establish churches throughout the land. And there was nothing to interfere with that. My God, can you imagine something? Like that? Who's going to stop him? Nobody. Nobody's going to stop him if it kills him. But he's also called to something else, and, and he considers. He considers it a calling. He was called to suffer for the gospel. Now, I don't know why. I don't know why, but God determined that suffering for the gospel would be a part of Paul's package in service to him. So we give ourselves to Christ and say, use me as you will. We don't know what that package contains, amen? Sometimes, sometimes it gets really really, really tough. And we start crying, this can't be God. This can't be God. Well, don't you think Paul could have said that? As they were beating him on the back with canes? This can't be God. This can't be God. As they threw him into prison? This surely can't be God. But the reason his thoughts didn't go there is because he was completely and beyond a shadow of a doubt convinced. Thoroughly convinced, well, this must be God. I don't like it. I'm not having a high time here. But evidently, because I said, use me for your gospel, I am being used for your gospel. Amen? Amen. We, oh, boy, that's a hard pill to swallow. We don't want to hear it, do we? But Paul, what does Paul tell Timothy? He says, for I know. I know whom I have believed. Amen? It wasn't you, Timothy. And it wasn't the rest of the guys I believed either. I believed Jesus Christ. That's who I believe. Amen? I am positively persuaded that he is able to keep me no matter what happens. I have no doubt. Glory to God. That, glory to God. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. 
in verses 13 and 14 in the Amplified, I read, he goes on to say, he goes on to say to uh, Timothy, he says, hold fast, Timothy, hold and follow the pattern of wholesome and sound teaching which you have heard from me in all the faith and love which are in it for us in Christ Jesus. Guard and keep with the greatest of care the precious and excellently adapted truth which has been entrusted to you by the help of the Holy Spirit who makes his home in us. See, those are the why. Those are the bones of the why. We're talking about why. Why am I here? Amen? Those are the bones of the why. Now, I've got to unpack that a little bit because we're called with a what? Come on, people. Holy calling. Like holy mackerel. Holy calling. Amen. We're called with a holy calling. Now, here's the meat. What are we focused on in our lives? And the crowd got silent. <laughs> and what is it we're focused on? What, what, is what we're focused on what God would have us to focus on? Is it like Paul? He's thoroughly in, in what God is asking him to do. Is that where we're at? See, I, I believe that so often, I'm talking about me. Heck, there's a mirror here somewhere. I'm talking about me. Do we, do we become fully immersed in what God wants us to do, or, to, or do we try to mix it up? Some of the stuff I want mixed with some of the stuff God wants. Amen? Amen? It, it's, like, it's like pouring vinegar and oil into a container and shaking it. How many of you have been successful at blending it? You know, the minute you stop shaking, it starts operating. Amen? So, so there's, there's something that goes on inside of us that wants to take what God's instruction to us, God's desire for us, His holy calling. We want to take that and mix it with, with what we want in our lives. Now, I'm not talking about I want to be a fireman if being a fireman is God's will for you. Amen? That's not mixing. That's doing what God called you to do. If God called you to, to, to be one of the unpackers and the shelf guys down at Safeway, then, then, then that's God's calling for you. Amen? It doesn't mean, and you minister there. You minister there. It doesn't mean you can't minister anyplace else. Amen? I'm just saying we're mixing, I'm just saying we're mixing some stuff in our lives that ain't supposed to be there. We need to think about those things. What are we focused on? Paul, Paul wouldn't be asking Timothy to what? To guard and keep, hold fast, Timothy, if it wasn't possible for us to lose our grip. Amen? Why would he be saying, now, Paul, make sure and keep this, hold fast to it, guard it, Paul. I mean, Timothy, it, 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 if, if it couldn't be stolen, if it couldn't be mixed. If it couldn't be taken away, why would he say such a thing? Guard and keep it if it wasn't possible for us to lose our grip. We can lose our conviction and our obedience to that, and we can even lose our positive determination to follow the holy calling in Christ. Amen? We're, we're capable of that. We do that all the time, sometimes for a minute, sometimes all day, sometimes for a week and a half. We're not doing God's thing. We are doing our thing. And Paul's saying, you know what, if, if you continue in that, you're going to lose it. You're going to lose track of what God has called you to. We can lose our conviction. Let me make an example of that. See, we can find ourselves, we come to church, we, we, we believe in Christ, we receive Jesus our Lord and Savior, we find a, a church that we uh, agree with and we like to go to, and so we're going to church. All of a sudden down the road, we can find out we're going to that church for all the wrong reasons. We're, we're going there for Sunday morning entertainment. Oh, man, I love the videos, and they got smoke coming up, and they got lightning flashing in the background, and they got, they got uh, TVs everywhere, monitors. They got, they got it going, man. All of a sudden, I'm not going there for rich fellowship with my brothers and sisters. I'm not going there to hear the Word of God, although I hear the Word of God. I don't even take notes. I'm just there for the lights and the sirens. Amen? Are you hearing me this morning? 
So, so what? I have lost focus. Am I going to church? Yeah, oh yeah, I go to church all the time. What did the preacher say? I don't know. But the lights and the smoke. It was awesome. They even had a platform where the preacher come up out of the crowd. I'm going back next week, see if he comes down from the top. Yeah, oh, one day I was there, he started preaching about angels. Pretty soon he's swinging back and forth. That's lost focus. <laughs> maybe, we, maybe we come Sunday morning because it's just the Christian thing to do. Everybody goes to church. All the Christians go to church, so I'll find me a church I can tolerate, and I go there. Wrong reasons. Wrong reasons. Amen? Amen. You're, I, know you're, I know you're following me. Maybe you just got a spiritual obligation. Amen? Amen. My sister May said, look who I drug here today. Look who I drug here. I asked him if he had scars on the back of his head being drugged. <laughs> being drugged into church this morning. We come for different reasons, and, and, and those reasons can confound our holy calling. They really can. Um, what I'm trying to say is that we can lose our focus of, of the why we're here. Amen? Amen. Because we're here in fellowship. We're here for fellowship and praise, fellowship and worship, fellowship with one another, fellowship with even our spouses. I mean, it, it, we're here. We're here for the richness and the presence of God in our lives. And maybe, maybe the Holy Spirit will spark something in our hearts that we we. Maybe it's in us. Maybe it's in a song of praise. Maybe it's in a song of worship. Maybe, maybe the pastor actually did say something important. You know. Why do we do what we do? And that's what this boils down to, because Paul says, I can tell you why I do what I do. Why do you do what you do? It might be do-do. Today's society is inwardly focused, man. What do I want? What are my needs? What will make me happy? Have you seen my belly button? I'm looking for it. So, so, so turned inward instead of turned outward to the world. And, and we try to, to reach out to a world and, and conform it to my needs, my desires, my wants. I tell you this morning, God did not call you to come into alignment with this world. He called you and me to be different in this world. It's so camouflaged you can't, can't even see a Christian. Just melds in with the rest of society. What is it that sets you apart? What is it that sets you apart when you're, when you're out walking downtown? What is it that sets you apart? Is it the bounce in your step, the smile on your face, and the friendly manner that you walk in? Or is it the, the gloom and destruction and expressions on your face? What, what is it that sets you apart when you're out there? Are you seeking God for the moment? Is that him? Is that him? Is that her? Is that the one I'm supposed to? Is it, maybe it's over there. It, my spiritual antenna's up. Or am I in a dead zone, man? I've got to get this. I got to get these groceries and get home because the ball game starts in 30 minutes. And that's what I'm focused on. Whew. If we go there, if we go to a place that makes me happy, if they, we go to a place that is always pleasing me and, and, and filling me, we're, we're going we're gonna to lose our purpose. We're going to lose our focus. And, 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 and focus on what? We're going to lose our focus on our holy calling. Everybody in this room today, I don't care if you're not saved, you have a holy calling. 
If you want to answer it today, you can. It doesn't matter who we are. We, each of us, have a holy calling, a call to holiness, a call to peace, a call to unity in the Spirit. We've been called to that. Called to be witnesses of God to the ends of the earth. Or we can become come-along Christians where we just go with the flow, amen? Suffering distractions that take us away from the purpose of God. Do finances take you away from the purpose of God? Do floods damage neighbors, uncles, cousins? Do they, do they draw you? Do these things draw you away from the purpose of God? This is, this, is, this is time spent that's wasted if it's not purposed unto God. Doesn't mean we can't change the oil in the car. What it means is that when you change the oil in the car, change it for Christ. Amen. It's just do all that you do as unto the Lord. All that you do as unto the Lord. This may have been Paul's last letter before his death. My goodness, we ought to give it some kind of due attention, don't you think? It may have been his last speech. Because he believes that the life Jesus has given him is all about God and God's purposes. And that's it. He called it a holy calling. Amen. We can't take it lightly. We can't take it at our convenience. We're not here to make God fit our purpose. We're here for God to become our purpose. Because Paul tells us, as he tells Timothy, it's not about what you want. And as I said before, you're, God didn't put you here to fit in with the world. He put you here to show the world that there's a totally another way. Another way to live, another way to believe, another way to understand, another way to pursue life. Amen? We good with that? This morning, and I would tie, tie all this in with, with what we learned about the last couple of weeks about walking in forgiveness, who we are in Christ Jesus, because it's not about our works. It's not about what we've done. It's not about what we might do. Our works, the Bible says, our works are like filthy rags. Isaiah 64, 6. We've all become like one who is unclean and un our righteous deeds, our works, are like a polluted garment. Now that changed with the coming of Jesus Christ. We're clean, amen? We're clean. But our works not done in Christ amount to Zero. Wood, hay, and stubble. Luke says it's going to be burned up. It's my matchstick sermon. Burned up. So now I hope and pray that we've, we've come in this house to know who we are in Christ. That person way down deep inside. The person of whom God says, I knit you. In your mama's womb. I did that. I did that. I did that. Well, you're, you're no accident. I knew you before you were. I have a place for you. A future and a purpose. In my father's house are many mansions. And you are one. You are one. I want you to know that. And I pray that we come to understand at least a little bit about the why. This morning. Why are we here? Why God? Why am I here? Why am I here now? Why am I who I am? Why did you make me this? Do you have that video for me? Would you play that, please?
Nothing's going to get you <laughs> if your desire is God's plan. I'm telling you, it should come as a complete surprise. <laughs> it should come as a complete surprise. I pray that we can, we can come to the place where we're fully persuaded, as was Paul, fully persuaded that we have a job to do, and it's not about us. We're in it, but it's not about us. Whether it be as, as Paul, a preacher, an apostle, a, a teacher, whatever my job is, whatever your job is, it's to be done unto the Lord. Amen? That, t- that we can come to the place to remember and believe, we believe that we truly have been called with a holy calling. That's a, a calling that has been set aside. That, that's the holiness of it. It's set aside for God. God has a particular mission for you, and it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're, you're 5 or, or 50 or, or 95. His plan for you does not stop. And it's there for us. Anytime we want to step into it, we need to step into it and begin putting aside the things of the world and concentrating on the things of God. A call, a call to holiness. Have we committed ourselves to the high calling of Christ Jesus in us? Have we set ourselves apart or have we lived in an, in an admix life? Now, I'm not believing for one, one moment, people, that we're going to walk out of here and do that. One of the most difficult things you could probably ever set your mind to is to walk in the fullness of Christ. One of the most, not impossible, but one of the most difficult things you're going to have to do. Even the apostles weren't completely happy with themselves. What I want to say, I don't say. The things I want to do, I don't get done. The things that I do, they mess up. You see the battle that goes on. But there was a battle because of a desire in the heart to do the will of God. See, if that desire to do the will of God wasn't there, then there's no battle to fight. Amen? There's no battle to fight. And and the devil and his minions, I mean, the devil, he never visits me. He's got stuff to do with it. He's got stuff to do with people way higher than me. But he sends his little funkles over to me, you know, and they, and, they, and they mess with me. And they do you too. And their sole desire is to draw you away from what God wants for you this day, this moment, this hour. Are we fully persuaded in our purpose? Because we're going to be looking into that next week, being fully persuaded in the purpose of God. Um, who am I? Why am I? Okay, and now what's the purpose of it all? What's the purpose? I'm sure that we're going to find out again that our purposes don't matter. Probably going to go there. That it's all about the purposes of God. We've got to remember the living sacrifice thing. Amen? Some of you remember that verse, Romans 12, 1 through 2. Do you have that? Uh, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies alone sacrifice holy and acceptable to God which he says is what your reasonable service your reason read that would you put that up on the screen Romans 12 1 and 2 read this slowly I feel like a fish sinking in the lake with me I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen? There's a key in that verse. There's a key in that verse. It's going to open the door for us next week. And we know that all things work together, Romans 8, 28, to those who are called according to his purpose. Are we called according to his purpose, or do we call ourselves according to our purpose? It makes a difference. It makes a difference.
Father, show us our purpose, Lord. In fact, let's just pray. Let's just pray. Father, I just pray in Jesus' name that you show us our purpose, Lord God, in life. Guard and guide us in the completion of your work in us on this earth unto eternity with you, God. May your kingdom be established in us. You are the kingdom. You are the power. You are the glory right now and forever. I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come, that you would revive us, that you would reignite fires that have, have smoldered, Father, that have become coals in our hearts, Lord God, that you would revive us, that you would fill us with your power, your life, your joy, your strength. Strengthen us where we felt weak. Clothe us with the light of Christ. Fill us with life. Jesus, please send your holy angels, would you? Minister to our families, our friends, Lord God. Us, guard us, protect us from sickness and harm and accidents. Just keep us safe. We just praise you now and forever. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we ask these things in Jesus' name that the Father be glorified in them. Amen? Amen. 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 Simple enough. We're here to glorify God. Amen? Amen? Not man. What are we doing? What are we doing with the holy calling that God has called us with? I just praise and I thank God for the message of Paul. I mean, come on, we're looking at a radical, amen? I mean, this guy's nuts, okay? He's way off the charts, but he's way off the charts for God. He is the epitome of radical. And nothing's going to get in his way. How often do things, well, how, let me put it this way, how often are we compromised by little stuff that takes place in our lives? Little stuff. Little stuff. Like I said before, my finances. Well, are you trusting in God or, or are we not? And yet that gets in the way of my holy calling. breakdowns. Are we trusting God or do we let a, a broken down car get in the way of our calling? Arguments with our spouse. Are we going to let them get in the way of our calling for God or are we going get to them, get them out of the way? Losing a job. Is that going to get in the way of my calling of God? Am I going to be panicked now because God can't provide? Or I'm going to put my entire trust in Him. It becomes an issue of trust. Believing. That's why Paul said, I know. I know whom I believed. I didn't believe it because the preacher said it. I didn't believe it because somebody else told me. I believed it because Jesus Christ spoke it to me. That's why I believe it. We sang a song earlier, All My Hope Is In Jesus. Is our hope in Christ? Is it really in Christ? See, that's the question. Is my hope in Christ? Is my hope, when I woke up this morning, was my hope in Christ? Or was my hope in the water heater and the pump? was my first hope in the light switch when I flipped it? Or was my hope in Jesus? Where is my hope? Some of us, when we came to Jesus Christ, we can remember the moment when we said anything. My life is now your life, Lord. Do what you will with it. And how far might we have come from, from our first belief? 
Because I can remember coming to the Lord. I can remember giving him my life. I can remember being crushed on the floor and being held by him, actually feeling hands holding me. I remember that. And yet I can drift so far from that moment that you this morning, you're not alone. There's plenty of us that are suffering the same thing. I just pray. I just pray that, that, that the Holy Spirit would move in your hearts this morning and that we can, we can just become a people who would serve, a people who, who would pursue, and a people who would profess Jesus Christ in our lives to the world in which we live. Amen? Amen. End of story. God bless you each and every one. I just pray that the Lord move mightily in you today and have a glorious day in the Lord. We got some